to be a truly fascinating event. And when you think about it, the theme is twisted logic. And my job, my career is, for the most part, built around that. And one of my inspirations is Albert Einstein, right? Twisted logic means to sort of challenge the status quo, challenge what is accepted. And Albert Einstein had one of the most twisted logical sort of paradigm shifts in the history of mankind. He basically said that gravity is not really the earth pulling us toward it, or any object for that matter pulling us toward it. His general theory of relativity basically states that space and time is warped around you and is actually pushing you down. You're not being pulled, you're actually being pushed, okay? That has served as an inspiration to me as I have gone into my career in engineering. And one of the things that I'm working on, actually the slide I want to show, is called Introduction to Nano Medicine. So I'm working on the idea of trying to treat disease, diagnose and treat disease at a molecular and cellular level. Okay? This is just an example of technology that has been developed by engineers and scientists over the years. This is just one example of clamps that are used in treating a, a heart attack, and so you need to have clamps that actually will hold vessels without tearing the vessels. You don't want to do any more damage than the body has already done. So you need to be able to hold the vessels without damaging the vessels. Another example is an artificial hip. So if you have to have hip replacement, some uh, engineer came up with titanium components that are shaped in a ball and socket sort of formation that allows you to still have that freedom of motion so you can do your, you can exercise, you can walk, uh, you can take the tea if you want to. And so this a lot, if you can ever catch the tea, it's not like New York uh, subway. <laughs> and so this allows you to still live your everyday life if you have to have a hip replacement. This is once again engineering, okay? Lastly is one of the greatest technological advancements on the macro scale for engineers, and that's to come up with an artificial heart. So if you have heart failure, right now it's difficult to get heart transplants, right, because you have to have somebody that actually has died. So you want to try to make something, and the heart does not regenerate itself. If you have a heart attack and that muscle dies, you don't regenerate it. So this is an example of engineering, right, that allows you to replace a, a vital organ. But these are all on the, mic on the macro scale. These are all things that are on the size you can actually see. So what about the basis for disease, the basis for disease actually occurs at the cellular and micro level. It does not occur at the macro level. It does not occur on the level that you can actually see. So why don't we try to diagnose and treat the disease at the same level, okay? So that's the, the fundamental basis for the new movement, to be honest, in medicine in general, and it's one of the areas that I work in. So nanomedicine, controlling the composition and structure of biomolecules and engineering novel structures and particles at the nanoscale presents a plethora of diagnostic and therapeutic opportunities in medicine. So these biomolecules are proteins. These biomolecules are new gene vectors you can potentially insert into cells to treat a particular disease that might be autoimmune. Anybody watch House, the TV show? They're always bringing up autoimmune. What does that mean? That means literally at the genetic level, you are predisposed to have a particular disease. It runs in your family. Diabetes is another example. Sickle cell anemia is another example. You're predisposed to have these particular diseases. So instead of trying to treat these diseases at the macro scale, let's try to treat these diseases at the cellular level, at the nano level. So what exactly then is a nano level? Well, this is just some, uh, a slide that I have put together, but I have a better example. We all know the sun, right? We all love the sun. During the wintertime, we miss the sun. <laughs> sun, please come back. The sun is about 149 million kilometers from, here, from us here on Earth, okay? If you were to divide that by one, one billionth, that will be on the size scale of your foot, okay? So think about that. The length from here to the sun, on the nanoscale, if we were to convert that to a nanoscale to give you some perspective, that's essentially the size of your foot. Compare your foot to being from here traveling to the sun. That's the nanoscale. That's the level of engineering we're trying to do from the size of your body down to a nano scale. Okay? So a couple of things that people know. This is a busy slide, but I want to point out real quick is this center slide. Your clothes have a particular color. That comes from a stain. Okay? That stain reflects white light back at that particular wavelength. 
People are designing particles at the nano scale. They change the size of that particle. It reflects and scatters a different wavelength of light. So by just changing the size of the particle, you can control whether you have a green particle, a red particle, or a blue particle. Why is that important? Well, if you had a couple of biomarkers or targets that get overexpressed, proteins that get overexpressed for a cell when you have a disease, like inflammation, you can target multiple uh, proteins with different colored particles and be able to diagnose, give a more accurate picture, a more complete picture of what that disease is. And now doctors can say, let's treat this particular protein that's been overexpressed instead of, like, instead of the gunshot approach that we currently use, which is let's just treat everything. Hopefully we'll knock out what's really the, the, the core of this particular disease. So in order to do that, you have to be able to sense these proteins. And people are coming up with technology where they can measure individual proteins or collection of proteins at the nano scale through deflections of material, making material on the nano scale that changes electrical conductance or has deflections that you can measure using optical techniques or electrical techniques. And so you can actually resolve individual proteins. So we can go, we're currently on the, the, the pathway to taking a small sample of blood and measuring an individual enzyme or protein that is the crux of a particular disease. Jim Collins was in BU Today. I don't know if you all read BU Today on a regular basis, but he was just elected into the National Academy of Engineering. Now that might not mean anything to anybody that's not an engineer. That's one of the highest honors that you could have as an engineer. That is like the culmination of your career. It's like a life achievement at the Oscars or the Grammys. And he was just awarded that. He's the first professor at Boston University that has spent his entire career at Boston University to be elected and inducted into the National Academy of Engineering. So what has he been elected for? Well, one of the things is actually controlling protein production from your cells at the cellular level, essentially triggering the uh, production, the machinery, whether you're going to turn the production of a protein on or off and keep that production on or off. Okay? That typically, we don't have the capacity to do that. Normally, your cell responds to biochemical cues, changing in temperature, changes in acidity within the body. He's trying to come up with ways to control the cells using bacteria in order to do that, produce particular proteins of interest. So this is just an example of biostability where he's actually chemically induced bacteria to produce a particular protein that increases over hours. And then he exposes these cells, subjected the, the cells to 42 degrees, and actually turns off that protein production. So he's able to manipulate the production of proteins just by sending a chemical signal or changing the temperature of the environment. And once it's on, it stays on. Once it's off, it stays off. That has really been the challenge. People have been trying to do this for years, but how do you do it? How do you maintain the signal and the production whether it's on or off. And he's been able to do that. And so this is one of the bases for him being elected, elected into the National Academy of Engineering. OK, so I'm going to try to finish up real quick, because I'm pretty sure I don't have a whole lot of time. I've got about two minutes. So what I'm working on in my laboratory is treating cancer using chemotherapy. The current approach is just to inject chemotherapy into the body. And it basically just uh, is, is your healthy cells are, are subjected to these cytotoxins, these toxic drugs. And so you end up with people having hair fallout, or they have stomach pains, or they're killing off white blood cells. And so my lab is actually trying to come up with ways to, to, with surgical precision to basically go in and say, I only want to treat the cancer. I don't want to treat your heart. I don't want to treat your liver. I don't want to treat your white blood cells, which is basically the source for you, of your immune system. So I want to go in with particles that will only accumulate in the tumors and then turn them on when I want to turn them on, using a signal that I designed those particles to respond to on the nano scale. Okay, so what we're coming up with is particles. Turns out that tumors have leaky vasculature. Okay, and so you can get particles into tumors preferentially. They will accumulate where they won't accumulate and other organs or tissue within the body, other than your clearance system, like the liver and the spleen and the kidneys. But that's fine because they're eventually going to expel that, right? So we want to have these particles accumulate in the tumors. So once we have these particles accumulate, we want to use ultrasound, which can be absorbed in heat tissue locally with millimeter precision. These nanoparticles then will release drugs only in the tumors. So we're heating with millimeter precision and releasing drugs on the nano scale, only in the tumors. 
All right, and so this would just solve one of the problems with chemotherapy. We're doing this with polymers that we are creating and synthesizing on the nanoscale, and then inserting those particles, these polymers, into liposomes, which are vesicles, which are made up essentially of the components of your cell membrane. And these are hundreds of nanometers. We're taking polymers, which are a few nanometers, and inserting them into liposomes, which are hundreds of nanometers, which then contain a drug that kills the tumor. And so this is just an example of the level of control we've been able to achieve. Uh, when you're at body temperature, you don't have much drug that gets out, 10% or less. When you heat up the tumor or, or you heat up the particle to about 40 or 42 degrees, which is when you have a fever, then you release 100% of the drug. So we're depositing the drug specifically in the tumors by just heating, the, heating the, the, the particles to a point of what you have when you have a fever, which is about 41 or 42 degrees. So you don't get any irreparable damage to the to, to, to healthy tissue, uh, but we're able to release the drug. So this is the, the future and the potential of nanomedicine. A lot of different things that people are trying to do. I won't go over this slide because I'm out of time, but I really thank you for your time. And I hope you, I introduce you to a whole new, well, a whole new uh, uh, pathway for treating disease. Thank you.